Hello, happy Friday. It is uh, November 15th, and <clears throat> this is uh, Doing Baseball Dailies with an Idiot. Uh, I am the idiot. My name is Jeff. I am one of the co-hosts of uh, Two Strike Noise, a baseball history podcast. New episode out today. Go check it out wherever you... If you don't know where to find podcasts, you're not going to find it. But uh, I think most people know how to find podcasts. Um, and I think it's probably down in our info page. But uh, let's, uh, let's get right into it, shall we? And uh, do some uh, baseball dailies. And uh, let's start out here by doing the uh, sports connections, which is sometimes baseball related. Uh, and if it is not, I generally have a hard time. But uh, let's see. We've got to group these into fours. And I like to just peruse it really quick, and I don't see a single thing that is baseball related. So that's just great. Uh, I do see some football things that I am familiar with. Giants, well, that says giant instead of giants. Eagle, commander, and then are the Steelers, are these all in the same conference? Because the Jets are not in the same conference as the Giants. That I know. Um, let's go ahead and just, uh, we'll just do that. Let's see what we get. One away. All right. So it's not Steelers. It's not the Jets. Uh, we'll, we'll skip that for now. <laughs> I do see bogey, par, birdie, and, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I mean, there should be one more golf thing, right? Why is this so hard today? I don't. I don't see a a uh, uh, another golf term here. Oh well, eagle. Duh. All right. So those aren't football teams. They tricked me. There's one. Yay. All right. So uh, we got to kind of figure out what is uh, what is the deal there. So we've got. Giant, Jet, Steeler, those are not football teams, apparently, that they're looking for. Um, jet, that is a kind of football play, but I don't, I don't see anything else that would be like that. Uh, a wave, I mean, that's what fans do, um, but I don't see anything else. Rain, I think spelled like that. I think that's the Seattle WNBA team because I know a lot about it. Oh, wait. Yeah, we've got the rain, the courage, the spirit. I think those are WNBA teams, but I don't see a, a fourth one. Um, yeah, I don't see a fourth one, so... I'm not sure if that is the case or not. This is a tough one. Is it? Do they make them harder on Fridays? Is this like the the uh, uh, crossword puzzle? I don't know what a bond spiel is. Um. Ooh. Oh. 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 You know what I see? I see the one of my <laughs> that I something that I watch quite often. I see a sheet, I see a house, I see a stone. This is curling, but is a bond spiel? Is that, some, is that what they call the broom or something? Hmm. We might as well go for it because I don't see anything else there that is curling related. Yes. I do want to, I think the bond spiel might be just what they call the, the broom. Um, all right, so we've got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. Um, hmm. I still think rain, cur oh, no. Are these women's soccer teams? The WSL, is that what it is? I think the wave are us. There we go. Oh, who is rocking this one? And then these are football teams without their minus the S's in their name. Yeah, see, they like to do that. 
Rock. All right. One down. Uh, let's do daily walk off now. Uh, we do this in pro mode for the A's, and then we might hit another team depending on how we do with the A's. Uh, all right, so here we've got franchise uh, career leaders in RBI, one through three and four through six, top uh, five home runs in 2021, and debuted with the Angels. So uh, let's see here. Debuted with the Angels, uh, maybe we'll... Oh, true. None of these names except for Kendry's Morales, I know, debuted with the Angels. Um, Jimmy Fox has got to be over here. Carlos Perez must have debuted with the Angels because he is definitely not an RBI leader and definitely was not on the team in 2021. Um, and Mike Holtz was a pitcher, I believe. Well, so was... Uh, yeah. We're going to do that because Al Simmons will be over here as well. I don't know who Bob Johnson is, but uh, let's do... Oh, I bet Sal Bando's over here. And then mcguire has got to be over here. These guys were all on the A's in 2021. None of these guys were. Um, I just don't know the order for the top six of... Uh, of uh, the A's. Andrew, you know the Angels, huh? Should we do the Angels? Uh, oh, you mean who is who is who debuted with the Angels? Is this right? <laughs> um I I really don't know who Bob Johnson is, but I'm guessing that he was an RBI machine for the Philadelphia Athletics. Uh, let's just go ahead and hit swing here and see what we get. All right, this is exactly exactly what I was thinking it was going to be. I have I've got to swap something here, and I have no idea. I have to assume Jimmy Fox is probably the all time leader. I maybe the captain isn't here. Is Bob Johnson that great? Uh. Mac had a lot of home runs, but I mean, he, or a lot of RBI, but he had more RBI in St. Louis, I'm sure. Uh, Canseco, I don't think he was in the leaders, or in the in the top three. I don't know. I mean, Sal Bando played elsewhere in his career too. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's see what Bob Johnson gets us. I am the greatest. I am Ricky Henderson. Of the day. Up until today, Lou Brock was considered the, the walk-off's greatest. But today, now I am considered the greatest. All right. That was uh that was that was fun. Not too too difficult. Let's uh let's do this. Let's do the Mariners, because they're kind of my fallback uh one here. So essentially we've got the exact same. Sorry, I got something on my glasses. The exact same categories. Oh, so Andrew, you should be good with this if the Dodgers. Uh, let's see here. Let's just go through. Casey Kochman probably debuted with the Dodgers. Um, boy. Uh, Edgar debuted with the Mariners. Kyle with the Mariners. Buner with the Yankees. What in the hell did you trade him for? I don't know. Joel Peralta possibly over here Hanniger, i think i don't he might have debuted with either the d-backs or the or the mariners uh ty france i thought debuted with the padres but maybe not i don't know who jake woods is uh alvin davis played one his last season for the angels but did not debut with him uh, Jared Kelnick did not debut with him. So we're going to do this because that's uh, Ty France. I, I know he came to the Mariners from San Diego, but I don't know if he debuted with San Diego. Uh, top five home runs in 2021. I think Ty France is a good idea there. Ichiro's not there. Hanny's probably there. And Seeger is probably there. I think I think these two categories might be good again. Um, we got to put Edgar over here. Oh, no. Kelnick. 
Kelnick there is no way he is in the top. Oh, but Siegs might be. Did Kelnick really hit that many home runs when he was with the Mariners? I don't think he did. Um, Seeger, ah, I think Seeger might have even retired by 2021. I think I, I think that might be what I have to go with there. And then this the the RBI is just kind of a crapshoot for me. I mean, every one of these guys had a lot of RBIs. I think Alvin Davis. I'm going to switch him with Seeger, uh, just because Seeger had high volume. RBIs. Um, these two have got to be the, the number one and two. And then Ichiro, you know, had a lot, but he was a leadoff batter. And AD, I mean, he's got to be there. All right, here we go. He did not debut with the Angels. Yeah, I didn't think so. I, I, think, I think the Mets traded him when he was in the minors for Edwin Jackson, and then he came up with the Mariners. So I think this is, I'm feeling confident with this. Let's hit the button. It's the exact same as the A's. All right. Um, let's see. I mean, Seeger's got to be the weak link here. Because Edgar and Griffey have got to be the one and two. Um, God, it might be AD. Um, God, did Bone, I just don't know if Bone had that, but he played for the Mariners for quite a while. Let's do that. Let's switch Bone and Siegs up and see what we get. I got to go buy a lottery ticket today. Yep, you're right. Bone there. And that, I bet you that might be the, the order. Let's, uh, let's, uh. We'll look that up. We'll look that up in a minute here. Let's do the grid. I'm feeling really good. I've <laughs> I blew through both of those things. All right. Uh, here we go with the grid. Of course, the rules are if Ricky Henderson can be used in a square, he has to be used. He cannot be used today. So uh, no biggie there. I am more concerned with the team on team action because that's what I like. Uh, and we can figure these out if we get there. Um, so let's see here. Let's uh, start with the Blue Jays because Ricky played for the Jays. And uh, we're just going to go across uh, what I like to do. I just start naming random players that I think of for the Blue Jays and then see if uh, they match up anywhere. So um, for the Blue Jays, we've got Dave Stewart. He didn't play for either of these teams. Uh, Mookie Wilson didn't play. Dave Winfield didn't play for any of these teams. Um, Joe Carter, no, Joe Carter came up with, was it Cleveland or somebody? I don't think Joe Carter played for either of these teams. Uh, Pat Borders, I don't think played for any of these teams. John Olerud didn't play for any of these teams. Um, Roberto Alomar, didn't, Alomar played for the White Sox, I believe, at one point, but came up with the Cubs, then went to Cleveland. Um, I mean, Roberto Alomar played for the White Sox, I think, but we're not, we don't, he's got issues. Um, Alfredo Griffin, I don't think played for either of these teams. Uh, we know Julio Franco and Bartolo Colon didn't play for these teams. Ruben Sierra didn't play for, for the, uh, for the Blue Jays. Um, Kelly Gruber, I don't remember who else he played for. Ed Sprague. Um, let's see, Pat Henkin, um, trying to think of, uh, Tom Hankey, uh, da, 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 da. who else we got? I'm just trying to think of, uh, oh, Frank Thomas. Ooh, we might have to play Frank Thomas. Alfredo debuted with Cleveland. I did not know that. Did not he is a he is a Bay Area guy, I'm pretty sure. I think Ricky, I think he grew up a little bit older than Ricky, but I think he and, and Stu and Ricky and all those guys. Um I mean we could play Frank Thomas here. I think that'll probably get a high score, but Frank's one of my guys. Um 
let's think of some other outfield uh, types that have played. Uh, I'm just trying to think of those teams in the early 90s. Although I'm just, I'm stuck on Frank Thomas. Um, and I still don't have any idea of a Royal. Um, let's see, Royals. Trying to think, Royals. My my guy Felix Jose, I don't think played for the uh, the Blue Jays. Um, Willie Wilson. I don't think he played for the Blue Jays. Um. Alex Cole. Ooh. Did Alex Cole play for the Royals? Because I'm putting him in the Royals Cleveland category if he did. I just don't think he did. I think it was Minnesota, Cleveland, and the Rockies are the uh the Alex Cole sweepstakes. Um What about Chili Davis? Chili Davis would work in a lot of these squares. And Devon White. Ooh. Those are the two two of the names I was trying to think of. Um, did Chili Davis play for the Royals? I think he did. From uh Chili Davis and Devon White, both from uh from uh, uh Jamaica. Hmm. I don't think Chili played for the White Sox, but I want to say Chili played for the for the Royals. And Devon White, I don't think he played for the Sox or the or the Royals. Um Boy, I want to use Chili, but I don't know if I don't know if he did. Ooh. Uh, we could use Bartolo for the White Sox in Cleveland, or we could use Julio Franco. Um, ooh, let's do this. Uh, let's do for 300 in the White Sox, let's do Joe Jackson. 11%? Wow, I am I am surprised. Usually when you throw Joe Jackson in there, you, you get a pretty low score. Um, got, you know, Brett's going to be the easy answer for 300 in Kansas City, but we are not going to, Buck Weaver for 1%, well, see, you're smarter than I am. <laughs> um, see, I want to put George Brett here, but I'm not going to, because when he won the batting title in 1990, he sat out a lot of that last week or so and to beat Ricky out for that. So I can't use him there. Um, you would think for a baseball history podcast, I would remember names like Buck Weaver and stuff, but I am really not that sharp. Um... Let's see. I, usually these teams are things I can mow down pretty quick, but I'm not doing it. Uh, I think we're going to use Julio Franco here in uh, in this spot just because uh, I don't like these to take forever. A point eight. I'll take that. Um, let's see. Well, let's do Cleveland then. Uh Cleveland and Kansas City. So in Kansas City, we've got Wally Joyner. We've got Bob Hamlin. Um, let's see. We've got uh, Chico Lean played uh, a little bit there in Kansas City. Um, just trying to avoid like the Frank Whites, the people that only played in you know for one team. Um, let's see. We've got. Trying to think of other third basemen for Kansas. Joe Randa. I don't think he played in Toronto or Cleveland. Um, ooh. Didn't, uh, I think Jim Eisenreich played in Toronto too, did he? 
But he's one of those guys I never... Rem I know he played in Minnesota. But I don't know if he played in Toronto as well. I'm not sure that he did. Uh, we've got, of course, the rapping Brett Saberhagen. But I don't think he played in either of those teams. Um, Dan Quisenberry. Um, Mike Sweeney. Or is it Mark Sweeney? It was one of the Sweeney's. But I don't, I don't remember where he played. Um, Daryl Porter. I don't remember where he played. Willie Wilson. God, did Willie Wilson ever hit 300? I know he, he was a pretty good hitter, but I don't know if he hit 300. Uh, let's see. Bo Jackson, I don't think, hit 300. Um, how about, I know Felix Jose didn't hit 300. Um, this is compelling, uh, content, I know. Why am I having, these are American League teams, too. Uh... I know Frank Thomas is the number one answer there. Um, bu 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 bu. Trying to think of who else pitched in Toronto. Jack Morris. David, ooh, David Cohn. That's probably going to be a pretty popular answer here. But I'm not sure if I'm coming up with anything better. Um, eh, let's do Coney. Let's just do it. I don't wanna I don't wanna spend too long on this. Yeah, that was a big one. I knew that. Um my goal, by the way, is to get a low score, but also just to get all nine. That's uh tends to be a challenge recently for me. Um Ooh, what about George Bell? That that'll work. Uh, make sure we get the right George Bell, and it's spelled with a G, not a J. Eight eh, percent. It's a little bit higher than I would have thought, but I'm I'm happy with that one. All right, Kansas City and Cleveland. Uh, let's see some Cleveland pitchers. Jack McDowell pitched a little bit there. Um, CC Sabathia did. Uh, I'm trying to think who in those teams. When they had the Alamars, was was pitching for them. Uh, Paul Shuey, did Paul Shuey play for the Royals? I don't think he did, or if he did, I don't remember. He's a, a reliever, so I'm never gonna remember. Um, boy, why can I not remember pitchers for Cleveland? Jose Mesa. Did he? I mean, he pitched everywhere. Joe Table. I don't know if he pitched for Kansas City, though. Um, who else was pitching when Brett Saberhagen was pitching for the Royals? Um, I don't know. Probably better to go and try to think of Cleveland guys. Uh... Vance Law, uh, Brooke Jacoby, Carlos Baerga. Didn't Mo Vaughn play like one season in Cleveland? Um, Jim Tome, of course. Paul Sorrento. Uh, Tony Pena. Did Tony Pena play for the Royals? I don't... He managed them. I've, I've gotten caught in that trap before. He managed the Royals, but he did not catch for them. Um, let's see. Let's go around the horn here for Cleveland. Who was at shortstop when, uh, when Alomar was at second? Jerry Brown, the governor? Uh, let's see, we have already mentioned Joe Carter, um, 
Kenny Lofton, of course, but I don't think he played for Kansas City. Um, Willie Mays Hayes, I don't think he played for Kansas City. Um, why am, why am I stuck on Chili Davis? I, I, I don't know why. I, I thought about putting him here. I don't know who Chili played for the Angels. He played for the Giants. Did he play for, I don't think he played for Cleveland. Um... Let's see, who else we had in the outfield in those days? Pronk? Travis Hafner? I, I don't I think he played for Texas, was the only other team he played for. Um uh, da, 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 da. let's see, Granky didn't pitch for the for Cleveland. Omar Vizquel, yeah, we can't use Omar. We don't, we don't use people like that. Um, and Mark would be pissed. <laughs> Boy, why? These are two teams that I generally know pretty well, and I can't think of anybody. All right, well, let's go back. Uh, let's do uh, forty home run seasons for the Blue Jays. Um, I mean, you got Frank Thomas. Uh, we used George Bell. Um, oh, what? I mean, Josh Donaldson? I don't think he hit uh, Jose Batista. I mean, Batista might be the number one answer. Or Frank Thomas might be. No, I, Frank Thomas didn't hit 40 with the Blue Jays. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Um... I mean, didn't I? I think Donaldson had an MVP like year, if not MVP year for for them. That could work. I'm trying to think of 80s and 90s though. Um, oh, what was the the George Bell? Who was the other power outfielder for them? Um, I'm gonna kick myself when I don't remember his name. Um, Roberto Alomar probably could have too, but we're not going to use him. Um, what was his name? That other, uh, he was the corner outfielders for the Blue Jays, George Bell and... George Bell and hold on one second. My dog just opened the door to a room that he's not supposed to be in. So uh, they can do that apparently. <laughs> be right back. Dogs that can open doors are a menace. Uh, Jesse Barfield, thank you, Andrew. Uh, did Barfield hit that many? Don't know. Uh, 340 home run. How many? Uh, is Otani going to be like a 96% score here? Um, I mean, there's so many better answers there. Let's do, uh, and let's just get that out of the way. We can do, I mean, my God, we can put Mantle. We can put Maze. We should do Willie. Let's do Willie Maze. That'll be a, a high score, I'm sure, but we'll do Willie Maze. Oh, 3%. Come on, people. Um, all right, well, then let's do Cleveland 40-plus. Should be able to come up with some nail like, Joe Charbonneau did not hit 40 home. He had a good, that one good rookie season, but Mel Ott, that's a good one. See, again, baseball history, I should know those names. Well, I know those names. I should be able to recall those names. 
Uh, Cleveland, 40 home runs. Um, oh, what was his name? What was his name? Uh, I mean, Cleveland, it's so they have so many players. They're s such an old franchise, and I'm not not remembering 40 home run guys from like the way way back days um i mean cabrera but we're not using or not cabrera uh jose ramirez but we're not using current players although i love him Switch hitter with power. Not a lot of answers for Cleveland 40, huh? I mean, Jim Tomey's got to be there. Um, I mean, it could be an Alomar, but we're not going to use that. J-Ram, uh, but again, no. All right, we'll just do Tomey. I mean, it's a Hall of Famer. We got to... I don't hate using him. Yeah, thirty-one percent. Yikes! Uh, but again, we're 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 a hundred percent so far. Um, let's see, Blue Jays. I think I want to do Josh Donaldson and just take a risk because that's what that's what this stream's all about. Taking a risk, not nah, but. Uh, did they have any big power bats? Rocky Calavito, that's a good answer. Hal Trotsky, I know that name, but I wouldn't have been able to tell you he was on Cleveland. Um, Toronto, I'm just trying to think of power in the early 90s. I mean, it was Bell and Barfield. And, and maybe Alomar. I don't think they had a bunch of huge bats beyond that. I'm trying to think who their DH was. And I don't remember. So let's just go with Josh Donaldson. Yeah, it's not a bad score there, to be honest. They only had one big bat. In late. Was it Bell or Barfield? You're going to tell me it was Jesse Barfield, weren't you? Oh, Carlos Delgado. Yeah, that late 90s. I was thinking of the early night. That's a good answer, though. Carlos Delgado. Yeah. Oh, boy. I mean, he's borderline Hall of Fame. Um, But, wow, I thought Donaldson would have been just recency bias. All right, so we've got Cleveland. Well, we've got Kansas City, essentially, here. Um. Calvin Schiraldi, was he on the Royals at any point? I don't remember. I'm trying to think of who was covering first in the 85 World Series on the blown call when, uh, was it Orta was, was called safe at first? I think it was Don Denkinger's blown call. I don't think it was Shiraldi, because Shiraldi was the goat in 86, the bad goat in the 86 World Series. Um, but I'm pretty sure he pitched in Cleveland. Um, uh, let's do 300 average for the Royals. Um, trying to avoid current players. So, if we do, um, and we're not doing George Brett, because he pissed me off that one time, though I love George Brett. Um, Eric Hosmer, I think we'll avoid that, too recent. Um, Wally, I, I just don't think Wally Joyner had that great of a season the little time he was in Kansas City. Um, 
God, I want to put Willie Wilson there. I want to put Willie Wilson somewhere. I've been mentioning his name, but I don't know Willie Wilson if he hit 300. If it was a 300 on base percentage, then I'm putting Willie Wilson. Um, how about Kansas City? Why am I not remembering many Royals? Um, I don't think Jermaine Dye or Johnny Damon hit that well. Did Johnny Damon play in Cleveland? I think he might have. I think he might have. I hate Johnny Damon, and he's... We're not going to use Johnny Damon. Thanks, Andrew, for joining us. You can catch the rest of this. I'll, I'll post it on YouTube, and you can catch the VOD, but thanks for joining us, man. Um... Let's see, Johnny Damon. Oh, I, I, I'm not going to use Johnny Damon. Johnny Damon's an a hole. I'm. I don't. I, we don't have to keep this safe for work. Johnny Damon's an asshole. Um. Let's see. I don't want to prolong this too much longer. Um. Frank White. Did Frank White ever hit 300? We're going to try it because we are getting to the point of uh, taking too long. He did not hit 300. Uh, all right. And here we are going to put. You know what? Screw it. We're going to try Willie Wilson here <laughs> and then we'll move on. I want to do one more thing before the end of the stream. Willie Wilson worked for 6%. Yes. Um, all right. A 189. That's not good. Wow, Andrew was right. Only seven people uh, hit 40-plus for Cleveland. Uh, George Brett was number one. David Cohn was number one for the Blue Jays and the Royals. Uh, Burley, Jose Batista. I'm glad I didn't use him. Uh, Tome was number one there. Um, let's see, Carlos Santana. Wow, if that's the number one... We'll have to look and see who else. Uh, Tome, Tome, Frank Thomas, uh, George Brett, and Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds, come on, people. We can be, we can do better than that. Uh, so we did get how many number ones did we get? We got two. We got Tome and and Coney. Um, all right, let's see who else was with Cleveland and Kansas City that we should have picked. Pat Borders. Oh, I knew that one. Dang it. Uh, Melky Cabrera, that one makes sense. Coco played for Cleveland and Kansas City. I did not know that. There's Johnny Damon, yeah. Todd Dunwood. Sal Fasano of that freaking awesome mustache. Um, uh, there are definitely some names here. George Contreras said it. We should have gotten. Scott Leis. Bemo, Brandon Moss. Ah, I did not know he played for... Ah, I guess I did know he played for those. Uh, Lou Pinnell... Ken Phelps. Ken Phelps. Jorge Orta. That was... I'm... That would have been great, wouldn't it? That would have been freaking great. Ah, uh, the Bipper, Bip Roberts, the Franimal. Kevin Seitzer, Pat Tabler. Ernie Young, my coach. Oh, boy, that's embarrassing. I can't tell him that. Can't tell him that. All right. Uh, so one thing I did want to do, uh, we talk about this on the pod this week, is calling pitches. Obviously, now we've got the pitch comm. Uh, some pitchers are even calling their own games on the pitch comm, but it's still generally the catcher. But I am fascinated, and we talked about it uh, on the pod this week, about pitchers that called their own games before the pitch comm. And uh, I, we talked about Greg Maddox and Roger Clemens. And um, hold on. Now the dog's trying to open my door. So give me one second again here. He just wants to be in here causing trouble. Um, 
And uh, so I found this. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the Pitching Ninja here in a minute because he talked to Roger Clemens, which got me started on this whole thing because Roger called some of his own pitches. But I know Greg Maddox uh, called his own pitches, and there's this great thing here by Eddie Perez, who was his caddy. Uh, talking about how Maddox called his pitches, and I thought this was great. So let's watch this one first. This is not in the pod this week because it's it's kind of hard to put this one on the pod. You'll, you'll see why, but let's watch this. I never told this to anybody, but he called his own pitches. I think it's pretty amazing how he did it. So how he caught the ball from Eddie determine what the next pitch was going to be. When he threw that pitch, he got fastball away. Fastball inside. Tap his leg with his glove. That is oh. a sign to Eddie Perez. Oh, that's not me in the background there. This is I, change. I, I must be 2000 or 1998. This. Nobody ever knew it. I mean, it was kind of brilliant. They don't call him a professor for nothing. <laughs> so, I... I knew that the way he caught the ball was a sign, but I didn't know about the other things. But that's great. And then this is the uh, interview with Pitching Ninja um, that uh, that he talks about. And I'm not going to do this full screen because it gets way too big. Uh, but you can hear uh, how Clemens would call some of his. Yeah. Pitches. So basically, if I looked right down the barrel, if I got the ball and came and came into my set position, I looked right down the barrel. It was hook or split because I'm trying to go middle middle with those pitches. If I came up and I slightly move, I had to do it very easy, very slightly. But the, the, again, the batter, this was more before the pitch clock, so all kinds of stuffs going. The hitter stepping out, looking at signs, redoing his gloves. So if I looked, if my eyes went to the left, my catcher knew I want that side of the plate. It didn't matter if it was a righty or lefty, and that's going to be a fastball or a slider to that side of the plate. So if he went fastball away. And I didn't move. He would just say with his hands, come on, I got you. So the same thing with the other side. I just glanced my eyes over there. He knew it was a backdoor slider if it was a lefty or I'm going away. Like Nolan did, Nolan would show his teeth when he wanted to throw his change up. And so we got onto that. The other thing we had to be careful with is if one of my ex-catchers were on the other team. They got traded or picked up by the other team. All bets were off that night. Yeah, so basically if I looked right now. So there you go. Uh, that is, I, I don't know, that's fascinating to me. Uh, especially the Nolan Ryan gritting his teeth thing. I, I, I want to see some video of him because that seems kind of obvious. Uh, but I thought Clemens had a good point there. Before the, the pitch clock, in between pitches, I mean, you got guys taking trips to the dugout almost, you know, tightening their gloves, doing, I mean, Big Poppy. Remember how long uh, he took in between pitches. Uh Boy, I hated working games uh, with the Mariners when Cano was on the team because he just took forever, stepping out of the box and just doing all this stuff, not paying attention to the pitcher. Uh, plus, you're looking down at the the coach if you if you need to get signs and stuff. So, very subtle uh, ways that I, I always remember. Uh, sometimes you would see pitchers wipe off. Um, where they would, t with their glove, they would wipe down on their on their pants, or sometimes they'd swipe across here, which would mean add one, and then swiping down would be subtract one. But that kind of was, you know, let's say you had four pitches. If the pitcher throws down a four <laughs> with something off speed, and you want to throw a fastball, then you're wiping three times. The batter knows how many pitches you have and kind of give it away. But... Uh, Calling pitches before a pitch comp, very interesting stuff. We talk about some more of this on uh, on the pod this week. Uh, please listen uh, to it. Um, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's this is it's a little bit different than this. Uh, Mark is there and he's got a bunch of stuff too. So uh, please join us. Uh, make sure to uh, subscribe so that you know when we go live or when we put new videos up. Uh, I always put these up there. If you're on Twitch. Um, these are always in the, the VOD tab. Uh, they keep them there for like a year or two so you can catch up. And then I'll post these on uh, YouTube as well. So uh, as well as our podcast. You can find us literally everywhere. But uh, we love to talk baseball. And everybody have a good weekend. I know no baseball this weekend. But you know what? Have a good weekend anyway. And uh, we'll see you next week.